Dear friends in Christ, I welcome you to another episode of the Liturgy of the World with Father Evaristus Abu. Today is Wednesday, the 29th day of March 2023. It is Wednesday of the fifth week of Lent. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word today, grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. Help us to stand for you like Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will always protect us and defend us when we defend our faith. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our readings today, our first reading is taken from the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verses 14 to 20, 24 to 25, and 28. While our gospel passage today is taken from the Holy Gospel according to John chapter 8, verses 31 to 42. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. In those days, King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, O Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up. Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bap, pipe, and every kind of music to fall down and worship the image which I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning fairy furnace. And who is the God? that will deliver you out of my hands. Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O oh, king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression of his face was changed against Sedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was accustomed to be heated. And he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He said to his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered the king, True. O king, he answered, But I see four men lose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hot. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted in him and set at naught the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you, O Lord God of our fathers, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. 
and blessed is your glorious holy name, and to be highly praised and exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you upon the throne of your kingdom, and to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you, you are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you who sit upon cherubim and look upon the deeps, and to be praised and highly exalted forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, and to be sung and glorified forever. You are to be praised and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Blessed are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bring forth fruit with patience. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been in bondage to anyone. How is it that you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not continue in the house forever. The Son continues forever. So, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you seek to kill me, because my words find no place in you. I speak of what I have seen with my father, and you do what you have heard from your father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would do what Abraham did. But now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You do the works of your father. They said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded and came forth from God. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. In today's Gospel passage, we see the oxtail exchange between Jesus and the Jews who by this time were determined to kill him. What was Jesus' offense that he called God his father, thereby making himself equal with God? Jesus told them, If God were truly your father, you would not want to kill me. But because you are not of God, that is why you seek to kill me. My words find no place in you. In other words, everything I have been preaching does not make sense to you. Of course, there are many people in our world today 
that they have uh, ooh, there are many people in our world today who have become hostile to the word of God, hostile to every Christian. No matter how much of God's word they hear, it wouldn't make any meaning to them. The Christian message has no bearing in their heart, no bearing in their life. They don't believe that there is anyone who is a good Christian. They have zeroed down their minds already to the fact that in this world, you know, God does not exist. Such persons are ready to do everything possible to fight to destroy the Christian faith. Just as they were ready to eliminate Jesus, there are many in our world today who are ready to eliminate all those who live like Christ. Jesus Christ told us already that we do not belong to this world. And because he has chosen us out of this world, the world hates us. This was the same hatred that Nebuchadnezzar felt towards Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. Nebuchadnezzar set up a golden image and made a command that no one should bow or worship any other god other than his golden image. But Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego stood their ground. Many of the people, even the Jews, even the Hebrews, the Israelites, who were, uh, you know, who were in a foreign land at this time, out of fear, they all bowed down to worship the golden image. But Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego stood their ground. Dear friends, even though the world is hostile to us, God expects us to stand our ground, just like Jesus, just like Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego. And there is something that they said to Nebuchadnezzar that is worth reflecting upon deeply. Nebuchadnezzar called them in a friendly manner and said, this is what I hear about you. But if you agree to worship the golden image, well and good for you. But if you refuse, then be prepared to be thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego said to him, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this regard. Our God, whom we serve, is able to save us. But even if he doesn't, we would never bow to your golden image. Nebuchadnezzar became annoyed at this. Child of God, this is the level of mature Christians or the level of mature worshippers of God. Not those who are jumping from one church to the other, or one miracle center to the other. Not those who will say, God, do this for me. Show yourself. If you don't do it, I will not worship you again. Mature faith is that faith that does not give God condition. Mature faith is that kind of faith that we say to God, even if you do it, I will still worship you. If you decide not to help me, I will still worship you. If my miracle does not come, I will still worship you. No matter what I go through, no matter the pains and the sufferings and the persecution that I encounter, I will still serve you. That is mature faith. And that is the faith that every Christian should have. You see, Jesus Christ was not so impressed by those who flocked around him just because they were looking for a miracle. He knew that after the miracle, they would walk away and they would begin to compare him with every other magician in town. There were so many magicians as at the time of Jesus Christ, and they were doing virtually the same thing that Jesus Christ was doing. They were raising the dead. You know, they were bringing healing to the sick. They were attracting crowds. And people were following them. 
And many of them were even doing it as a business. And so Jesus Christ came and was doing the same thing. And at a point, people just felt, oh, he's one of them. He's one of the magicians. And you remember, there was even a time that there was this rumor. There was a rumor about Jesus Christ that he was able to cast out demons by the power of Beelzebub. You see, Jesus Christ looked at the towns where many of his miracles had been worked. And he said, oh, oh, alas for you, Korazin. Arras for you, Bethsaida, because if the miracles worked in you had been worked in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago. Many Christians today, we are after miracle, we are not after repentance. We forget what God has done for us, and the moment we hit a roadblock, the moment we experience any form of difficulty, we stop worshiping God, we stop praying to God, we give up on God. We need to have that, you know, that firm conviction in God. We need to, we need to tell God, oh God, I, 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 I trust in you. I believe in you. You don't need to prove yourself anymore. Cedric Meshach and Abednego said, oh King, even if our God does not save us, we will not bow to your image. And this infuriated Nebuchadnezzar. But at the end of the day, Nebuchadnezzar himself testified. He's saying, did we not throw three men into the furnace? How come I now see four? <laughs> Where did the fourth man come from? And that fourth man is looking like the son of the gods. Child of God, if you stand for God, God will stand for you. Jesus Christ said it that anyone who is ashamed of me in this adulterous you know, generation, I will be ashamed of him in my kingdom in heaven. But anyone who stands for me, I will stand for him. We need to stand for God today. Because so many Christians are worshipping the golden image. When we tell lies, when we steal, when we partake of evil, we know prostitution and all kinds of things, you know, fraud, internet fraud, you know, all kinds of evil things that we do, even rigging elections, even collecting bribe from politicians, just name it. Some people even cheat their customers. They sell inferior products. Some change the scale. You know, at Philly Station, some people operating Philly Stations will change the scale so that they will sell 10 liters as 20 liters. So many evil things that we do, we all need to look inwards and examine ourselves. Whatever you are doing in the name of trying to make ends meet, it's, it's, it's a shame and a disgrace to your faith. Because you should know that as a child of God, God is capable of providing for his children. And so if you say, oh, I have to do this business, and your conscience tells you that this business is wrong, and you say just to put food on the table, are you saying that God cannot put food on the table of his children? Why are you bowing to the golden image? Why don't you trust God and do what is right? Trust God and do what is right. Even if it means being thrown into the furnace of poverty, the furnace of hunger, the furnace of hopelessness, God will show up for you as the fourth man in the fire. You don't have to bow to the world, to the pressure of the world. You don't have to give up on your faith because the God we serve remembers the poor. The God we serve remembers those who stand for him. Don't be afraid to stand and defend your faith. Trust in God, even in difficult times. Even though you have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil because God is always with you. May God bless his words in our hearts and may God bring us to that level of mature faith so that like Cedric, Meshach, and Abednego, we will always stand by what is right, worship God and God alone and not the material things of this world. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all 
both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.